Hey guys, it's been about a year since one of my first and most popular videos released on the channel. That video being the Raspberry Pi 4 SSD boot video featuring Home Assistant, as many of the videos on this channel do. Um, today we're going to go ahead and open that video's birthday gift. Uh, it's not Home Assistant Amber, but I have it on the screen because I took the concept from Home Assistant Amber. And through the blessings of whatever gods we all pray to, uh, certain beta firmwares and beta builds have once again been released, allowing us to achieve a very similar setup. Um, anyway, without dressing it up anymore, this video is going to be the sequel to the last video. Instead of booting from an SSD, uh, the Compute Module 4 allows us to utilize the full speed of the PCIe lanes on the board, and we are going to boot from an M2 SSD. Uh, we're going to have the full speed this time. You could have used an M2 in the last video using adapters and whatnot, but you were going to be bottlenecked. So for my people who aren't here for Home Assistant, you will find this video useful. For my people that are here for the Home Assistant install, we're just going to take an extra step and install the latest build of Home Assistant onto our M2 drive. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so step one is we're going to have to download a few things. Um, the one that we're really going to need to communicate with our compute module is going to be the RPI boot setup. And we're going to be downloading this twice because if you're running this like me, you're running off of Windows and it creates a lot of extra steps. Um, I'm going to have these links in the description, so just feel free to follow along and copy and paste that. So RPI boot, we're going to save it. We're going to run as administrator. It's going to do its thing here. Just let it happen. All right, that's going to be the uh, foundation of this video. You'll see in a few minutes. Um, you're going to go ahead and download your Haas OS Home Assistant uh, operating system build. We're going to be doing 7.01. Um, I've got the link to that in the description. We're going to download the latest 64-bit uh, Raspi OS. I uh, also got the link to that. I've already got them, so let's just shoot to the next step. All right, so go ahead and plug your um, M2 adapter into your computer. And we are going to pop open the old trusty Ballina Etcher. And we're going to flash Home Assistant onto our NVMe drive. And this should look familiar. This is just like what we did last time. Uh, it's going to ask you if you're sure you want to mess with this giant drive and we're going to say yeah destroy it and uh, put something better on it and that's it for that um just go ahead and put that to the side for now and we'll go to the next step all right, now we're going to go ahead and set up our uh, compute module and carrier board to act as a uh, USB drive, essentially. Um, this is going to allow us to put stuff on it and flash it and whatnot. Um, go ahead and you should have a either jumper clip or some cables like I do. You're going to go ahead and short the first two pins. They're labeled on there. Um, we're going to go ahead and connect our micro USB cable and plug it in. And now we're going to run our Pi boot. Okay, we've done that. Now you go ahead and uh, plug it in. Okay, now that that's set up, uh, as you can see, I've already got some stuff on here, but don't worry about it. I'm going to go right along with you guys and start from scratch. 
Um, you should grab Raspberry Pi Imager if you don't already have it, but if you've been messing with Pies, you should have it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab a custom image and grab the image we downloaded earlier, the 64-bit build. This one is going to take a while, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, go ahead and um, unplug and replug your micro USB cable. Uh, you might have to rerun the RPI boot so that it will show the drive. But we're going to go ahead and set this thing up. Uh, first thing you want to do is go into the config.txt. Um, you want to enable USB. Uh, it's probably not necessary right now, but if you go to hook up a keyboard or a mouse or anything to it, it's not going to work. Uh, the CM4 disables it by default to save power, you know, something or another. But anyway, go to the bottom. Uh, I'm going to have this in the description. Copy and paste. Save. Good to go on that. Next order of business is going to be to set up the Wi-Fi so that we can just SSH in. We've done this a couple times in a couple videos. Create a blank file named SSH with no extension. Create another file called WPA supplicant dot conf. And I'm also going to have this in the description. I'm going to go ahead and paste it. And you enter your network credentials here. Go ahead and save it and unplug your Raspberry Pi. All right, so go ahead and uh, remove your jumpers and remove your micro USB cable and let that thing power up. Uh, it's not going to be a slave to the computer you had it attached to anymore. It'll boot up on its own. And the first thing we're going to do is locate it on our network. Um, I've got a unified network controller, so I'm able to see everything that's attached to the Wi-Fi I logged into. It's right here. Um, if you just got a regular router, it's probably either going to be 192.168.11 in your browser or 10.0.0.1 in your browser. Um, if those don't work, you can also get an IP sniffer. There's like 101 ways to do this. We're just going to run through it pretty quick. Um, you're going to want to download PuTTY. Um, it's going to allow us to SSH in. using the IP address that we have located here. The login for the Pi is going to be user Pi password raspberry. First order of business is always to make sure this thing's updated. And we're good to go. Now we're going to go ahead and do the roundabout fun that I was talking about earlier. Um, since we're on Windows, we're going to have to install the USB boot again onto the Pi. And then we're going to have to copy some files back. So eh, don't worry about it too much. I've already dealt with the pain for you guys. Just follow along. This is the beauty of using SSH. You can just copy and paste all this stuff. It's going to be in the description. First thing we're going to do is get libusb. And then now we're going to go ahead and clone our USB boot files from GitHub. And let's go ahead and go into the USB boot folder. Create it. All right. 
now we're going to go ahead and, well, it's a little crazy, but we're going to update the recovery files to the beta bootloader. Uh, these are the files we're going to copy back, but we're going to set all this up and it's going to be good to go when we plug in our um, CM4 when we hook back up to the computer. Uh, it's going to flash those recovery things pretty much instantly, so it's not too much. Uh, I've already sourced the latest beta firmware, which is actually one day ago. Um, this is part of what allows us to utilize the NVMe boot. So let's go ahead and let's do it the lazy way. Copy. We're going to be overwriting the file that's already in there with the beta firmware. So that's what's happening here. Yeah, all right. I don't know. That this seemed to work for me yesterday, too. Um, so copy the URL that I had um, in the description, but then go here to the download tab, copy the link, and replace that URL. It's the same URL. I, I don't know, man. If someone can explain to me why that works, I can't. But it works, so let's go with that. All right, and the next part is going to be setting the uh, boot order. All right, and you see where it says boot order? We're just going to add a six to the end. Uh, it goes from back to front. Six is the NVMe drive. And we're going to control X and save all right now if you were on linux you'd be done here um well hold up one more you want to update it one more time to lock in that configuration um now we got to set up samba shares and set up a folder to share the you know root file system of the raspberry pi to windows Okay, set up Samba. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, create the share. And scroll all the way to the bottom. And go ahead and control X and save. And now we're going to create the user that we're going to log in with. Into your password twice. All right. Now you can pop open here. Navigate to your IP. Go to Pi Share. Go to USB Boot. Copy this recovery folder. I just copy it to desktop. Now we're going to go navigate to your RPI boot folder on your Windows. 
and replace that thing. Make sure you copy the right folder. All right, cool. Yeah, don't do not do what I did. Uh, make sure you copy the one that's not on the network. All right, now we're going to go ahead and unplug our Raspberry Pi again. Get out of your putty. Um, we're going to once again put the jumpers on. We're going to plug in our micro USB, and then we're going to power up again. Um, before you power up, go ahead and run this. And now we're going to run command line. We're at the final stretch. We're at the final stretch. Go ahead. Navigate to the location of your RPI boot. And now we're going to flash the recovery. Um, what it's doing is flashing those files we copied because we replaced the original recovery files. So in theory, this should allow you to flash the bootloader. <laughs> Very roundabout, but it works. And if you got to here, go ahead and unplug and replug your uh, your micro USB cable. Uh, if that doesn't work, unplug and replug the whole thing. That did the trick. Um, now we're going to come back. We're going to SSH back in and confirm that we have the newest bootloader. All right, and to uh, confirm, you're going to copy and paste this command here. Yep, there it is. It's showing that the latest bootloader is 29th of April. That would be the latest stable, according to whatever information they got. Ours is November 22nd, 2021. Um, last part here, you're going to take your NVMe drive. You're going to plug it into your NVMe adapter. And you're going to fire this thing up. Um, then we should boot Home Assistant. Let's see. And we are good to go. Hooked up to Ethernet. Um, obviously, you can pre-configure your Home Assistant for Wi-Fi, but it's just more steps. Um, if you got a direct connection, it's a little bit easier. So we did that. Um, a couple of things went wrong along the way, and I'm glad they did because now you guys can see how to troubleshoot. Um, hopefully you found the video useful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what else you guys want to see. Let me know what you thought of the video. Uh, until next time, thank you.